you've been writing a lot about Evan Fournier and a lot of people assume that Fournier is kind of that next step, obviously for the Celtics in terms of their off season movement and, and just trying to fill out the books, fill out the roster. What's your uh, kind of latest and greatest, your estimation on that situation and you know, what kind of contract he's going to command. And uh, if it in fact is a foregone conclusion that he's a Celtic again. Yeah, all indications are that he enjoyed his time in Boston. I mean, beyond what he said, but he even talking to people I know were close to him, which I, I know some people from his time uh, spent years spent here in Orlando, where I am located, is that he did enjoy it in Boston. He really liked the players. He liked the coaches. He liked the little taste of the fans that, that he got, you know, from, from his time uh, there with the Celtics. So I think that part is all good. I think for Forney, it's going to come down to, uh, years and money as it does almost with everybody in this day and age it, with, with contract wise this is probably his last chance at anything resembling a big contract he's going to be uh, you know in his 30s probably at the end of this next contract that's going to be you know it's it's not the barrier it once was of you know a guy's over 30 can't pay him anymore you know that's not the same way it used to be but but I do think this is probably his last chance and then I do know he would prefer something longer term because he's got a young family. Um, again, he's from France. So this is really his home for half the year or three quarters of the year. So he doesn't want to be in a position where he's going to be bouncing all over the place. It was hard for him to get traded from Orlando, you know, despite the fact there's a much better situation, winning club, all those things, because he'd been here so long. He was really established in the area and those kind of things. So that becomes hard on these guys to get moved, especially when, they're not from the U.S. So this, wherever becomes home, becomes home. Um, my feeling is with everybody on the roster, we're going to find out real quick what Brad Stevens really thought of them when he was coaching them. You know, was, if I, I tweeted that the day his new <laughs> job was announced. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we're going to find out, you know, uh, yeah, he wasn't so big on that guy if he moves the guy right away. And I don't want to say that with Kemba Walker because I involved a lot of other things and contracts and things were there. But, but I do think what we're going to see with Brad Stevens is – and Evan Fournier is if they can get him on a, a deal that makes sense that allows him to remain flexible, whether it remains a good tradable piece on that contract or it's short term or something like that, that's going to be what it is. Cause you don't make the Kemba Walker trade to then turn right around and muddy your, your books. You, that, that's not what you're trying to do. You, you wanted to do that to create that flexibility for the next couple of years and do those things. And now they're in a position where if they can get Fournier on a reasonable number, almost kind of doesn't matter what the number is this year because you're going to be over the cap. You're going to be near the tax, probably into the tax this year. But what matters is what's the number beyond this year? And can you get off it if you need to, if it is Bradley Beal wants to come to Boston or something along those lines, um, you want to be set up that Fournier is not a hindrance on whatever his next contract is. Yeah, that's, that's the idea of it. What does the perfect Fournier contract look like? And I was thinking, you know, you, you mentioned how he likes to stay in one place because that's just the way he is and with his family and that's great. And, you know, I'm thinking like something short term that doesn't, you know, screw up their long-term flexibility here because that corporate contract, you know, we all know how it decreases after this year unless they make the finals and it becomes fully guaranteed. Um, you know, Jason Tatum missed out on a ginormous payday because he missed the all NBA team. So that's going to be a little bit helpful. Jalen Brown's contract is super friendly for what he's really worth. And that gets, you know, more as it goes along, but like, as I, I mentioned last show, I believe in the last year of his deal, he'll be making $30 million. Meanwhile, Ben Simmons, who you can't play in the last minute of any playoff game, has been making $37 million. So there's 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 all that going on, too. But, so but don't forget, some people believe that you should trade Jalen Brown for Ben Simmons. Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. <laughs> I mean, I, look, and I, and I like Ben. I'm not trying to, like, I like Ben. I hope he gets a fresh start somewhere where he can really work on his game and, and develop into a better player. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to trade Jalen Brown for a guy that I can't play in the last couple minutes of the playoff game. It's just not going to, it's not realistic, but you know, you look at this team, you look at their, their cap situation, you know, what does the perfect contract look like to you, Keith? I mean, again, numbers, years, what does that look like? Yeah. What I would try to do is start him around 18, 19 million this year. I wrote a pretty long piece in depth piece for Celtics blog that I encourage everybody to go check out. Cause it can walk you through a okay. lot of the, the factors with that. So I think 18, 19 million dollars uh, front loaded though, where it's 18, 19 million, then it declines each year after that. And that, that's something that's getting more popular with good non all-stars. So we're seeing teams really use that to their leverage because again, in that first year, probably doesn't really matter all that much. 
you know, it, it does to an extent because they're not going to want to go too deep into the tax and all those kind of things. But you pay them 18, 19 in the first year. Then it declines, you know, each year after that. If you can get a team option on the end, so much the better. But that's probably pushing it a little bit. But give him four years. Because if you're looking at it and you're saying, you know, yeah, four years, you know, 60, 70 million feels about right to me. Then you flip it. You front load it. So then it becomes more desirable as a trade piece over the next couple of years beyond that. And then as he ages, you're still getting good solid value on that contract. And that's, you know, I, I think that's the framework that makes a lot of sense for the Celtics. Their challenge is going to be, does a team like the New York Knicks, who's sitting on more cap space than they can probably really use, say at the end of, you know what, we're a playoff team, we'd like to be a longer stay in playoff team and stay relevant. Do they swoop in and say, here's one year, 25 million you know, and get you back out on the free agent market. And that's what the Celtics are going to be kind of contending with is does somebody come in and say, you know, whether it's New York or Dallas or San Antonio, uh, we don't have anywhere else to spend our cap space, but you know, so we're, we're not going to tie up our books long-term, but we'll pay a whole bunch of money for one year. That's going to be something that Celtics are working against, but Fournier, you know, I know, he had COVID and he had a couple rough shooting games and that, and the playoffs were a little messy, but the playoffs were a little messy for just about everybody. Um, he was a really good fit. He shot up over 50% on catch and shoot three pointers with the Celtics. The only other guy at the volume that he had that's up around that number is Joe Harris, who's one of the best shooters in the league. So Fournier knows how to play with Brown and Tatum and knows how to figure out how to get himself to open spots on the floor. And I think with a little bit more comfort, you're going to see him really be an even better player than he was, which was already pretty good during his time in Boston. Hi guys, Cedric Maxwell here. I want to take a minute to tell you about Marigold Medical. I'm used to keeping my body in great shape, but with arthritis, even the most simple everyday tasks became unbearable. As soon as I called Marigold Medical, I knew I was in good hands. No drugs, no surgery, just an experienced team of caring professionals that wanted to get me back to doing the things I love. Make the call to Marigold Medical and get back to pain-free life. 